seizing $8,000, the savings she saved up for this, this innocent business owner. Federal appeals court just restored a New York woman's chance to win back thousands of dollars, her money that authorities seized and believed that it was connected to crime. They believed it. Background on the seized money for you, Crystal Starling was in fact never charged with a crime when her money was taken. October 2020, local police in Rochester raided her apartment because her then boyfriend was suspected of dealing drugs. Police never cited Starling with any offenses. But even after her boyfriend was acquitted, authorities kept the money, $8,040 to be exact. They seized it, Atlanta Black Star with the details. Starling, who owned a food cart at the time, had planned to use that money to purchase a food truck. Moving up, she wanted. She assumed that since it had been proven the money wasn't connected to any crime, it would be returned to her. However, the Rochester Police Department transferred her money to the Drug Enforcement Administration, where it's been ever since. In the years since that incident, Starling has been working on her own to fight against the forfeiture. Without legal assistance, she was able to navigate the process. She notified the Justice Department that she was challenging the forfeiture. But she missed the deadline to file a notice in federal court, which permits the government to move to forfeit her money by default. Injustice within the court system, hmm. February 2022, a district court judge ruled she would not be able to salvage her money because she missed the single filing deadline. She wrote letters requesting an extension, but the judge decided she had not demonstrated excusable neglect and awarded her money to the government. After partnering with the Institute of Justice, a nonprofit firm that challenges civil asset forfeiture laws nationwide, attorneys with the law firm appealed the judge's decision, arguing Starling was held to an unfair and higher standard than usual for someone acting as their own representative in court. And the US Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit agreed and ruled the judge's ruling defective. That revived Starling's case. Second Court Circuit wrote, as was made clear in this case, the lax notice requirements allow the government to start the clock forward toward default. With perfunctory measures such as ordinary mail and by posting on a government forfeiture website, the citizen rate has no reason to know of. Kind of makes sense. Second court added, and because the typical forfeiture case concerns cash and goods with consequence to the deprived party, but which rarely justify hiring a lawyer, huge number of civil forfeiture cases are fought by claimants acting pro se. All this is driven by incentive. The authorities can pocket what they can seize by forfeit. Institute of Justice attorney Seth Young says the court recognized what has always been abundantly clear about civil forfeiture. Allowing police to pocket the money they take from people who have never been charged with a crime encourages police to take more money from innocent people. They shouldn't get the money from the criminals either. It's a crime against who? The state, the people, why are they getting any of the money? When will this change, Mayor, and be recognized for what it is? As far as I'm concerned, they stole our money. They should be get some punitive damages here. The district judge is complicit in this, and oh yeah, interest. Yeah, I think listen, not not just interest, also the fact that she's a small business owner and lost the money to purchase the food truck or whatever she was gonna do with it, that she should be owed revenue. I, I think this is absolutely disgusting. This is a play on what I tell people all the time. Let's call it what it is, civil, civil forfeiture is nothing but policing for profit, period. This idea that I could take your resources and know that the system is so complicated and I'm likely gonna benefit from it is disgusting. And the fact that it's a part of American society speaks to the inhumane and unjust way that we police people in this country. And I hate to sound, I hate to be the guy that sounds like a, a nagging whistle, but guess who's negatively affected by this more than others? Black people. Black people lose more in civil forfeiture than any other community. And we and this is not by mistake or happenstance. We have to really consider what our policing system is set up for in this country when we can name all these ways in which we are hurt, wronged more than anybody else. Wrong more than anybody else. This is absolutely disgusting for sure. There's people still mayor who don't understand why some people want it done away with. 
Let's think of something else that isn't always laid at our feet, on our backs or necks, as it will be.